morning everybody. How are you all today? I hope you're all doing absolutely wonderfully. I'm already feeling so hot and sticky. It's a very odd day today. I think we had a ton of rain last night. There's so much moisture in the air and it's a bit warm. It's muggy and there's loads to do. Um, actually, I'll just take you down the garden and show you. There's quite a lot to do. It's that time of year when things are going over, get them out, get the next thing in. I've got harvests to deal with. But also in the last few days, I've actually not had much time down here, but when I was here on Saturday, I was having a walk around and I was thinking, mm, it's good, but I could have done things a bit better, a bit differently. So I'm just going to take you guys down the garden now and show you what I'm talking about. <sighs> harvests tidying it is that time of year but just before we get to the garden one of my first jobs of today yes I need to string the onions I'm going to do a separate video actually about the onions in terms of how I've dried them how I'm going to clean them up and now get them onto their strings to hang them I did a bit of a pick the other day but I didn't have enough bags to take it all home so there's a mass of tomatoes there plus there's loads more on the plants I'll show you now as we go down the garden it's a lovely day I was gonna say it's lovely and quiet but of course invariably that's when an airplane goes overhead so yes thinking about things these squash my both the baby butternuts that are climbing and the geet underneath which I understood would be an absolute giant an absolute whopper what I'm thinking is that this bed was newly dug out oh when was it this spring um, and I didn't have any organic matter to add and I think the bottom line is I think it just didn't have enough sort of manure compost what have you in there for these plants to really thrive I am getting some butternut fruits. Oh, isn't that beautiful? These are, these are only baby butternuts. They're not going to get huge. But I just think the plants in this bed have all struggled. So once they're all out in the autumn, I'm definitely going to be looking to add a load of muck, compost, what have you, because it's a handy extra little bed. Um, now, this bed is where I'll do things differently next year. I mean obviously where we are now it's going to hop a bed because I rotate. So I've always, where this tunnel is now, I've always grown a few rows of peas but the mildew comes to the peas so quickly on this site and for the amount of space they take up I don't feel like I ever get a massive amount from them. I mean I love them, who doesn't love a garden pea fresh from its pod? But I think I've made the decision that next year I shan't grow any at all. And where I had... Oh, we need to go the other way. There's no space. Where last October I planted the broad beans here. And they did really, really well. And now the cocos have gone in. I need to start to look to see if I need to harvest. Our sun... This is south... So most of the sun is coming this way. But then, of course, I've got this mass of beans in the way. So I think these guys down here have suffered for a bit of lack of light. So what I'm going to do next year, the broad beans would be going there. I'm actually going to put them at the far end of that squash bed so that if we imagine it's this bed this year, what will happen is the broad beans would be at this front end instead of peas followed by the cocoa de pan pole and then with that little bit of extra space by not having the peas I can have my um, six rows my three double rows of beans but at the basically I can make the base wider and hopefully by having a wider sort of you know triangle for them to climb up it'll make it a bit stronger plus of course some new canes do you know I was saying the other day about them drying on the vine? They're really, really getting dry now. Now, it's also this stage of year where 
I mean, hopefully we're going to have lots more, lots more sunny days because what we don't want, which is happening at the moment, is all this rain, as fast as they're drying out, they're getting soggy again. So it's a bit of a, dame, a, bleh, a game of dare at the moment. Um, if we now get a couple of really good weeks of sunshine and then we've got rain forecast, I might have them off the vine a bit earlier than anticipated. So for next year, this this bed will be the one with the most change. I just think where I planted the broad beans at the end dictated where I put the Coco de Pampol. They've had too much shade, so we'll just swap that and bring them to the front of this bed, get rid of peas, a bit more space, a sturdier structure. Now in the squash bed, I also think I always plant quite closely. But I think this year I just pushed it too much with this bed. This is all perfectly normal and natural. It's all starting to go over. Oh, it's so like autumn already. But I had four rows of squash in here. And really, I think it was one row too many. I think they've all been fighting for the nutrients in the soil. So I'll go back to three rows. So nine plants. I'm going to go to a single variety of back to single variety next year and that will mean that I can save seed and the seed hopefully will come good even though my neighbours do different things. <clears throat> I think the the cucumbers with the peppers worked perfectly well but I did end up this sort of space to to get down the path I ended up really 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 cramped and I was actually sometimes well quite often missing cukes I just couldn't get to them. So I think again, by losing one row of the pumpkins, give them a little bit more space and then this row could come just slightly this way to give me a bit more space. Look, I picked all those tomatoes. I've got masses more to pick. Oh, they're beautiful. Please sunshine. Uh, at the moment, touching wood, no sign of blight, thank goodness. Now, here's another little change for next year. Slight dilemma about it. <clears throat> Absolutely loved the flint corn. Love it, love it, love it. And I think the shade that it's provided for the celeriac has done the celeriac really well. Um, obviously, all the mulching has helped, etc. But, <laughs> look, can you see who's in there? Hey, Bessie. Bessie, what are you doing in the celeriac? <laughs> so I think the shade from the flint corn has been great for the celeriac, but it's, it's morning shade on the tomatoes, which I think, I don't know, these guys on this end seem to be ripening more slowly. So maybe I just need to think about the orientation of the flint corn, where it's casting shadow in terms of the um, tomatoes i.e. the things that really want the sunshine. <clears throat> the Adam Army are coming on okay, but again, I'm not getting a huge amount of crop for the space, whereas the rock and core, which here, these are my ones for saving seed now, I get masses, masses for the space. So I think next year the Adam Army will go and I'll just concentrate on the rock and core, which Oh, I just love them so much. Beautiful, beautiful bean. <clears throat> Otherwise, the layout in terms of the onions, leeks, carrots, more onions. Oh, these have got to come out today, which is why I'm doing the whites today. They have to come out and the brassicas have to go in. I think this works really well, this layout. <coughs> Excuse me, I just swallowed a fly. <coughs> oh, yuck, I'm veggie. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that will pretty much stay the same. And I think in terms of parsnips, calendula, the chickpeas, the spuds, that could all stay the same as well. The only difference will be, I, I'm pretty sure I won't bother with quinoa next year because of the space. So I will have just this one row here when we go down the bottom end of the garden into the other bed in the rotation next year. So it's a little bit of space to think about something. I think maybe some more sort of spinach and salad leaves which I always think I don't eat but I do <laughs> and when I get given them by neighbours I really enjoy them 
so yeah it's, that's, I think it's generally a good time of year to have a little walk around your plot think about you know what has worked if something hasn't worked to think about why is it is it because it didn't get enough light is it because the plants were competing for nutrients so things like the squash they are really greedy feeders um, so yeah have a little wander around your plot think about what you've grown that you maybe didn't even like to eat you know obviously if you don't like to eat something there's no point growing it think about things you'd like to try maybe look at what your neighbours have grown this year and think oh I'd like to have a go at that and also it's the perfect time of the year to be starting to talk to your neighbours about seed sharing um, you know are they keeping seeds for something they've grown that you really liked the look of and maybe you've got something you can trade with them so yeah it's a great time at, I don't know if you can see you won't be able to pick up oh can I try working this zoom thing how does it work? No, I can't work it. I was just going to show you Bessie and the flint corn. Yeah, so have a little chat with your neighbours. Have a little walk around your plot. Start the joyous job of planning next year. I love it. So for now, I'm going to get on with the onions. It's going to take me forever. And as I say, I'm going to do um, a separate little video on harvesting, curing and stringing up and storing your onions so that'll be another video in a couple of days. So for now I shall say cheerio on this hot and muggy day and I'll catch up with you all again really soon I hope. Take care.